All right, welcome back. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, what we've got here is actually some sandback jaz jasmine or Arabian jasmine. As uh, as I search the inter internet for uh, you know some jasmine bonsai, you come up with a lot of uh, water jasmine, which is on my list to get. I plan on getting one very soon, but. Uh, you know that's not what this is. This is just a standard the the standard vine. It's actually Kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass to have in the landscape in that it grows just kind of uncontrollably but uh, The few that actually the few pictures that I actually found of this type were actually just really just a stick You know like this big with like maybe three branches coming off of it you know, getting sold for like 50 bucks or something like that just because it's got a little white flower on there or whatever but uh, you know you can see this is a pretty good sized trunk this is actually uh, I moved in this house uh, I guess almost six years ago or actually I'm sorry a little over six years ago and I share a chain link fence with a neighbor and this uh, well this and actually a much bigger one were actually like right at the chain link fence the bigger one was actually on their side of the fence just a little bit Super overgrown. This one's on my was on my side of the fence a little bit more, uh, not quite as overgrown. I mean, it was actually all one piece. I think it was just one plant at one point that just kind of spread out. And you know, I, I kind of let it go. Just it was in a spot of the you know it's in the backyard. Who really cares? And it was providing some pri privacy between the two houses. And then the guy that lived there, uh, he passed away, and eventually you know the house sold and some other people moved in. And they started trying to chop it down, chop it down, and it started making my side look really sick. And also just kind of hanging the more on my side and everything. And I kept trying to, thinking I was going to kind of trim it up and save it. But the more you trim it, the more it grew. And eventually, uh, he got it dug back far enough to where we decided uh, we were actually out there together. I mean, he doesn't speak much English and I don't speak much Spanish. But we decided together we'd just go ahead and dig it up. I was going to try to save the bigger stump, but the bigger stump was actually embedded in the chain link fence. So this is the stump that was on my side. Uh, we did this, I guess it was about six or seven weeks ago. And I guess, yeah, it was uh, mid-July, I think. I think it was July 17th I saw that uh, some of these pictures that I've been showing you were or whatever. But it's recovered nicely. And I just kind of decided that I wish I would have planted a little bit higher in this pot. You know, sometimes at the time I just kind of put it in there hoping for some survival. But I would like to be able to see the trunk a little bit more. It gets runners off the trunk, and I want to be able to prevent that from happening. But then I also want to be able to kind of select these lower branches, which ones I'm going to keep a little bit better. And I can't really select that or whatever. I don't want the runners to keep you know running. I want just branches coming off of the main trunk. I don't want any extra pieces of stump or anything. So I thought about trying to like quickly slip pot it into something a little bit shorter. I had some good sized pots for that. But to just try to, like, you know, I mean, I, I, it was just a few weeks ago that, you know, this was just a stump with no green on at all. I'm going to try to just kind of lift it up out of here. When I did plant it, I planted it in like a, about half and half its native soil and some used bonsai soil. So I've got some more used soil. I don't know if it's going to be quite enough to raise it up, but I'm going to take... And I'm just going to try to lift it up, try to take some of this stuff and just kind of maybe, you know, get it to hold up in the pot just a little bit more. And then just try to, you know, chopstick or I've got a, like a makeshift chopstick or whatever. Just try to get some of this substrate under there. And again, then I'll be able to see the trunk a little bit better as it goes. Probably just leave it in here for quite a while. It is, uh, you know, being that it's not that common, it's probably not going to make the best bonsai material. But it's something unique. And it does have a nice thick trunk, being that it's just a vine. Usually a vine like this, it's, you know, it's hard to find like that. You do find a lot of bougainvilleas like that. Bougainvillea is a lot more popular for bonsai, so that's a good reason for it. And so it's just unique, and it didn't cost me anything. I mean, the neighbor and I, we were going to take the uh, trees out anyway, so... Alright, so I'm just going to try to... First off, I don't remember... Yeah, it's not really even all that pop down yet this should be pretty easy just 
try and knock some of this down to the bottom. And then get a little more substrate underneath of it. There, that piece. It hadn't really put out much roots yet. That was mostly probably just some stored energy that was in the trunk of where all this green came from. Kind of a kind of a good thing because I didn't really want to disturb too many roots. And again, I think the the chances of me doing any really serious harm the way it kind of survived that transplant already, I don't think so. So, that's the end of the used stuff I had. I got, I do have a little bit of fresh stuff here. Of course, if I'd have known I was going to be using the fresh stuff, I probably would have put that on the bottom and put the used stuff on top, but. It's alright. And since I did pull up like that, you know, you want to make sure you work it in. And so now you can see much more of the stump. And I saw this here. You can see right in there that there's like a bunch of green starting right in there and that's the kind of stuff I want to I want to try to stamp out. I don't want I don't want this to get any runners cuz it's hard to describe those initial pictures but those runners will go and just kind of attach themselves to the ground and make a new stump. That's actually what this was. I'm going to guess probably about 20 years ago is a runner that just kind of made itself a new stump. The homes here are about 40 years old and I'm gonna guess that you know this had been there for a good portion of the time but now I can kinda of, I'm gonna leave this I was thinking I might kinda of take out some of this growth down here it's a little piece I did just take out a little piece there at the bottom that was growing straight down That one there. And you see, this one's coming right out to where it kind of would be in a place where a sucker would be. Kind of want to take that out. A little piece of dead root. And then there are that's another one coming out of the bottom. I would like Perhaps maybe address that. There's two crossing pieces there. I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna try to make something out of it, I do want to try to keep things from crossing each other too much. There's a uh, piece here, almost as thick as maybe a felt tip marker, and then this piece here, it's about pencil size. It's coming up. I'm thinking I'd like to take out that bottom one because it's kind of growing straight out of the side and doesn't look very natural. I think I will. Of course, then I wanted to save that branch, but then I just damaged that on accident there. And we'll just see what happens with that over some time. I have found... I've got... I have I have four bougainvilleas and some pots that I'm trying to 
trying to let go. I did some major work to two of them just before I started my channel here, so I haven't done any work to them since. I'm going two years soon. I, you know, I look forward to showing them to you. I just don't want them to just show them without doing any work to them. I want to make sure they're ready for some work. But I have found that with these vining plants, if you kind of take and often do this, if you notice I'm just bending it down, that, and without trimming it, does seem like when you trim it, all of a sudden, especially on the Bougainvillea, I haven't really done much with the jasmine yet, seems like if you trim it, this becomes very lignified in that it starts turning kind of woody. But if you just leave it like this and kind of flex it down often, that eventually, if you know, even just when I started, this was sticking straight up, eventually it kind of gets a little more branch-like instead of sticking straight up like that. And of course, that's the longest one. There are two branches above it. I do want to make sure that those keep, you know, some energy going up there too. Although, I mean, this long piece here, it's got some movement, but no taper, but it does go into that, that pretty fat trunk down there and everything. So, yeah, I think I'll just leave it alone from here again. Me kind of pulling it up there, disturbed it enough, but at least now I can kind of watch for the, for the suckers coming out. 